from people reclaiming their health and healing from chronic disease to celebrities and biohackers chasing youth and vitality, everybody seems to be using red light therapy. You might be thinking, maybe I need to use red light too. Or another scenario, you already have a red light therapy device, but you're unsure of its benefits and how to use it to get results. This is very common. I know a lot of people like that. So in this video, I'll explain what red light therapy does, who will benefit from it, and what are the best ways to use this therapy. Before we dive into specific benefits red light therapy can deliver and discuss groups of people who most likely will benefit from this kind of therapy, let's pause for a moment and look at what red light therapy is and how it works inside the body. If we were to simplify it, red light stimulates specific biochemical reactions inside the cell that will lead to increased energy production inside the cell and stimulate cellular repair. And this will generate all kinds of benefits that we will look at into the next section of this video. Red light therapy or any other wavelength of light can be delivered through specific devices. And those range from red light therapy beds that are generally used in the clinics. Sometimes those are installed in people's homes as well. If you have sufficient space for this type of device, then you can have a red light therapy panel, which comes in different sizes and can be easily used in people's homes. You can have a red light therapy bracelet or watch that delivers red light specifically to ulnar and radial artery, or red light can be administered intravenously, and usually that is done in the clinic. Natural sunlight is the most common way to deliver light therapy to the body. And we know that it affects our, how circadian rhythm function. So our sleep and wake cycle helps us produce more vitamin D. And also it affects our mood and general health. Nowadays, red light therapy is being mostly delivered through devices that contain numerous LED lights. Those LED lights are very safe, can be used at home, and they cover a larger area. But also, if you go to the clinic, sometimes you see that the red light is delivered through laser pens that require more specific protocols, have a more narrow guidelines on how to use them not to do any harm, but in some cases, they're also more effective and more powerful than just regular red light therapy devices. There are specific wavelengths of light that could be used. Red and infrared are the most common, and you will see a lot of research done at those specific wavelengths. But it doesn't mean that these are the only wavelengths that are being used. Green light, for example, is a lot more effective for headaches and migraines then is red light. Blue light is used a lot in psoriasis and skin autoimmune conditions, while red light might aggravate those. So choosing the right wavelengths is part of the light therapy protocol that needs to be taken into account. In this particular video, I will talk more about red light and infrared light, simply because these are being used a lot more and people usually have questions about those specific wavelengths. Red light therapy, also called photobiomodulation, which stands for specific benefits of light produced inside the cells. So red light therapy uses specific wavelengths of light, which lie in red and near infrared spectrum. Red light spectrum is 600 to 700 nanometers. This is the wavelength of light. And near infrared is 700 to 1100 nanometers wavelength. Some devices also include far infrared, which is 3000 nanometers and up. And far infrared usually produces vasodilation and heating effect that makes the therapy comfortable and adds to detoxing benefits of red light. When light enters the skin, it's scattered 
through the tissues and then it enters the cell and it's being absorbed in the mitochondria in the electron transport chain and we talk a lot about mitochondria and electron transport chain on this channel because it has to do a lot with energy production so it's being absorbed by cytochrome c oxidase within the electron transport chain in mitochondria where we produce energy and of course you can understand that we optimize energy production cycle as this light is being transformed into energy that's being used to stimulate mitochondria to produce more energy. This light also, in a continuous use basis, will optimize the health of mitochondria. So anybody who suffers from suboptimal mitochondrial function, and those would typically be people who uh, suffer from post-infectious syndromes, such as long COVID, or people who have generally low energy, who are not resilient to infections and often get sick, or people who carry high toxic load and have a difficult time detoxing it, which shows up in different symptoms from skin eruptions to being tired to different chronic diseases. So all these groups of people will absolutely benefit from this mitochondrial optimization benefit of red light therapy, while biohackers and people who are looking to increase their longevity and improve their general health will always see benefits when their mitochondrial function is improved. Therefore, you can see that in mitochondrial world, in the world of optimizing mitochondrial function, red light therapy is actually applicable to almost every group of people. And by red light, I mean red in the wavelength of 600 to 700 nanometers and near infrared, 700 to 1100 nanometers. And you will see that these are the wavelengths that most of the devices usually use. Besides mitochondrial function optimization effect, another fascinating benefit of red light therapy is improved circulation. Improved circulation means that there is better flow in the blood vessels so we can deliver more oxygen and more nutrients to the cell because whenever we have compromised circulation, cells suffer from lack of oxygen and lack of nutrients simply because these things cannot get to the cell. So every time cytochrome C absorbs red light, it releases nitric oxide. Nitric oxide widens and relaxes blood vessels, leading to improved circulation. People who've had an injury, any kind of injury, whether physical injury or maybe a stroke, because that's a form of brain injury, will benefit from the use of red light therapy because of this improved circulation effect of the therapy. One of the most fascinating use of red light therapy is in skin rejuvenation and anti-aging. It's actually being used a lot in aesthetics world. In the specific wavelength of 630 to 660 nanometers of red light, red light penetrates the skin and is being absorbed by fibroblasts, so it stimulates fibroblasts. Now, fibroblasts are the cells that are responsible for collagen and elastin formation in the body. When we age, we start to produce less and less collagen, and that results in visible signs of aging, sagging skin, older-looking skin. So when we increase the collagen formation, everything is much firmer, the fine lines, the wrinkles are decreased, plus, because of the improvement in circulation, we also get this internal glow of the skin and better cell turnover in the skin cells. So the old cells are being better replenished by younger cells. Therefore, in the specific wavelength, 630 to 660, there are different devices that could be used to deliver the specific wavelengths from red light therapy mask to bigger devices such as red light therapy bed or panels. Just make sure that your red light therapy mask uses those specific wavelengths of red light that have been shown to improve the visual appearance of the skin. One of the benefits of red light therapy is decrease in inflammation and decrease in pain. Therefore, it's being used a lot for people with injuries, pain syndromes, joint pain, muscle pain, or nerve pain. 
Specific wavelengths will penetrate tissues to different depths. So 630 to 640 is generally surface penetration, as we've seen with skin rejuvenation. So if somebody has very superficial pain, then those wavelengths of red light would work better. Now, when we look to improve pain and inflammation in deeper tissues, such as bones, muscles, ligaments, and joints, we need to go to different wavelength settings. Specifically, 810 to 940 nanometers will help a lot with musculoskeletal joint ligament pain or nerve pain that lies in deeper tissues. Therefore, the wavelength is important depending on the tissue that you're trying to affect. Once red light reaches those tissues, it works in the immune system response, so it shifts it from more inflammatory into repair mode. It decreases oxidative stress within the cell and it acts on nerve endings, decreasing the pain. The length of the red light therapy session, if you're looking to decrease pain specifically, matters too. If normally your device uh, sets for 10-minute session, then for pain relief, you most likely need a 20-minute session. For the panel, I recommend, of course, depending on the intensity and strength of the panel, but it's always a longer session for pain relief than it is for skin rejuvenation or a mitochondrial optimization benefits of red light. One of the areas of research of red light use and also area where we're seeing a lot of results lately is brain health and the use of red light therapy for brain injuries. Brain injury is not only a result of being involved in a serious motor vehicle accident. Think of brain injury of anything that's affected the functioning of the brain, which could be an infectious disease like SARS-CoV-2, or it could be past emotional trauma, which definitely affects brain health, or post-traumatic stress disorder, all forms of concussion. So there are different ways a person can sustain a brain injury. Now, when somebody has a brain injury, usually they have a decline in their cognitive function, in their mental health, in their memory, and of course, they want to see that improved. Studies in scientific research and clinical application have shown that specific wavelengths of red and near-infrared, specifically from 800 to 1064 nanometers wavelength, can penetrate up to 2 centimeters deep into the brain tissue and specifically affect areas of the brain that are responsible for memory, cognition, and emotional health. People who have not had a brain injury and use red light in their brain area see their memory improved, cognition improved, and their emotional health being more stable as well. So you don't have to have a brain injury to use red light in the head and brain area. Now, the best devices, in my opinion, that can deliver a red light specifically to this area of the body are either helmets or intranasal devices. Helmets can absolutely, without any doubt, be used at home by people. They're very safe. Just make sure that those are lead light devices that deliver red and near infrared in the specific wavelength of 800 to 1000 and 64 nanometers. Also remember that red light therapy use improves circulation. So when we apply red light therapy to the brain, we see improvement in circulation and improvement in the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the brain cells. We optimize brain cell mitochondrial health. It applies to the brain the same way it applies to any other area of your body. And that will, of course, improve brain health in general. There are many benefits uh, to red light therapy. However, before you start using it, please check if you don't have any contraindications, such as sensitivity to light or pregnancy. There are very few, actually. Make sure that you have the right wavelength setting, depending on the benefit that you'd like to reach. Uh, we talked about it in this video, how more superficial penetration is probably 630 nanometers. If you want deeper penetration, you're looking into 800s and 900s nanometers. 
Another factor you need to consider is the intensity, and the bigger is the device, generally the more is the intensity and the time spent doing red light therapy. For pain reduction, you definitely need longer sessions, sometimes twice as long as normal sessions. Depending on the device, so depending on the intensity, the time spent in front of the device will vary. For red light therapy mask, which will improve skin appearance, it's usually 20 minutes. Now for all other indications, you need to look into intensity of the device that you use, the bigger the device, the more is the intensity, and adjust the time setting. Could be anything from five minutes to 20 minutes of red light therapy session. Wish you all the best, please stay healthy, and I'll see you next week.